Sproggy would snag my brain with his grid tactics. It's put bigger smiles on my face than any other iPhone game this year. That's thanks to this rich, delicious, dark roast blend of tactical roguelike and happy Nintendo-ness. It's almost too perfect. It's like I've been asking for this game for a while, but now that I have it, I feel like a spoiled brat. I feel like Veruca Salt. I just want more. I want the world. I want the whole world. Give it to me now. I want a deep engrossing roguelike I can take on vacation with my phone or click through on my PC when I get back. I want permadeath, but I want persistent rewards even when I die. I want procedural level design, but with an overworld and selectable stages. I want six player classes and a charming art style and original settings and subversive surprises and boss fights galore. And I want it now. I'm a greedy child and I want to hit things. Sproggywood lets me hit things whenever I want. Walruses, charging goat men, a dozen kinds of slime, even phallic mushrooms. I want to hit all of those things. The walrus smacking echoes the brilliance of the game's combat systems. The depth and simplicity here is so accessible that a baby could kill things. Press your direction to move or attack. Wait a turn if you like. Use no more than four special abilities. That's it. See? Babies can kill things too. Six class types offer a unique diversity for outsmarting a battlefield full of enemies. Leveling up is a race each run. It feels thrilling, exciting to get your skills as sorted out as possible. Loot drops into the shop for you to purchase for future loadouts, just like Rogue Legacy. This ensures that even if you keep dying on that one dungeon, you're constantly getting more cash to improve that one class. Or maybe how quickly you level up overall. Randomizing elements keep the game wild. The Identity Crisis Potion scrambles your current skills against all the other skills in the game. It's still a gamble, and that's what makes it fun, especially when you're in the battlefield in the middle of a challenging run. I really hope the term Sproggy Wood isn't referential to killing all the phallic mushrooms in the game. Lead dev Brian Brucklew says, I think it's just the way mushrooms look. We didn't go, let's have some dick monsters at least. While fair, it makes me think that Nintendo must have had a very specific make sure these mushrooms don't look like penises rule when making all those Mario games. It's nice that there's some Finnish mythology that complements the lead artist Jaina Heiska's Finnish background, but I think I get enough of that without people telling me about it. I don't want text heavy dialogue and this game has way too much of it. Base building serves little purpose other than to attract casual players. Drop rocks and different kinds of grass wherever you want, because reasons. I don't see the point, <laughs> as it doesn't seem to relate to the core mechanics of the game. Save progress is nice, but it would have been even better if I could save mid-run. The game was perfect for a vacation, but I want to play the game while waiting somewhere, and it's not always great for that. This may be the single greatest hitch for casual players, though the captivating nature of the rest of the game may still win out. Sproggywood fires on all cylinders as a rich, accessible tactics game. It's the perfect starter roguelike that eases unfamiliar players into permadeath and procedurally generated dungeons. Phallic mushrooms and the lack of mid-run saves might keep new players out, but the only major issue is that this quote-unquote perfect game does everything that I want, but it doesn't magically fix my greedy desires to have everything my way. I still want more. I'm still unsatisfied, but that's not Sproggywood's fault. If anything, it shows that I'm the monster, and that I need a satisfaction that doesn't come from games. Good show, Spruggy. Good show. For plus 10 damage, I give Spruggywood an 8.0. For more on interesting games like Spruggywood, stay tuned to plus10damage.com.